enjoy most about football? Piling on, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Mountaineer Rants. I'm Terry. This is Paul. Glad to see you back again. First thing I want to do is say thanks for watching. We're going to go over the Texas Tech game, give you a little review, but I want to just acknowledge a couple people that have been, that have been commenting out there. Um, the Yates 27 said, unless our secondary can improve on the Baylor game, we're in trouble. Boy, you were prophetic there. So thanks for the comment. Keep them coming. These are the comments on the Texas Tech review. Exactly. And th th this was after the game where we didn't really play very well. Laura Fleming, Steve Pasacchio, good good notes. Steve, you said that this game would go a long way to finding out how good of a team we were. Well, yeesh. Doesn't um, look good. <laughs> uh, BPA, 1985, worst loss to unranked opponent since 1965. You're exactly correct. Uh, nothing I can really say, but thanks for the comment. And then, Sean, you said that Tech was stronger and faster and more disciplined than last year, and we found out, and you're exactly right. We found out. Clearly. Texas Clearly Tech, uh, props to Texas Tech. They played their game. They played the way they needed to play to win. Uh, but West Virginia did not play well to win. So For those of you that didn't see the game, it ended 48-10. to 10. Texas Tech beat West Virginia, who was – who just didn't do well in any phase of the game. West Virginia scored three points in the fourth quarter and seven points in the third quarter, and that was it. Uh, Texas Tech, on the other hand, put up 14, and then three, and then 14, and then 17 more in the fourth quarter. And that included three interceptions that we threw uh, that gave them 17 points and another fumble. Speaking of which, you know, early in that game, and if you go back to watch the preview, I, we had mentioned, I said, this game's going to be won or lost in the first quarter, he a little did. bit part in the second quarter. You can they, learn stuff listening to this guy here. <laughs> well, we did say we'd win, and so yeah. we, we were absolutely wrong, Sean. Got you on that. You were exactly right. We blew it completely. If I had the dunce cap, I'd wear it. Um, but this game, they, they came out and punched us in the mouth, and, and we said, okay, we need to get in a track meet game with them. We couldn't move the ball. They punched us in the mouth again. It was 17-3, to and we were coming down the field at halftime. You know, we put a touchdown in right there, and it's 17-10, to and we get the ball in the second half, but we threw the interception. And I'm like, okay, well, that's all right. Our next series, we get the ball, we'll go down and score first part of the second half, and then it'll change everything. We threw another interception. That was after Momentum that happened. Killed. It was over. Momentum yeah. killing. <laughs> it was over. Uh, Tech passed for three hundred and fifty-five yards. We passed for two hundred and nine. Tech rushed for two hundred and thirty-six yards. We rushed for seventy-three. The total uh, uh, was five hundred and ninety-one yards for Tech. They just we didn't slow them 100 down. Hundred offensive plays. But but we knew Tech was going to score some points. Yes. We knew they'd move down the field. We didn't expect to give them four turnovers. What we didn't expect and what I'm still red-faced over is how weak our offense was and we didn't move the ball. This is, <laughs> this is the fifth road game that we've lost under Coach Brown by 25 points or more. I don't know that that has to do with the road or the quality of the teams, uh, but it's, uh, it's the fourth straight time Texas Tech has beaten us. They seem to have our number. They come off a bye week three times in the last four years, and they just beat our tails. I mean, two years ago down there, it was we they got ahead of us. We fought back, but we dropped the ball. Last year, they caught us by surprise. This year, this was not a football game. This was a mismatch completely. From where we had some chances, even if we make some plays, that they beat us. It was just from top to bottom. There was very little about the West Virginia performance that you could point to. Normally, you point to a team and say, "Well, special teams were good, and offense was bad, or something like that." With the possible exception of the kicker, the punter Oliver Straw, forty-six yeah. yard average on his punch. Yeah, that's that uh, was a good uh, game for him. From top to bottom, it was a weak performance. Our quarterback that you count on, he he had twenty-three completions for one hundred and ninety-two yards. They had 28 completions for 325 yards. I think that's probably more a reflection of our receivers versus theirs and our defensive secondary versus theirs. But Daniels threw three interceptions also. And he's and a red shirt, Morton for Texas Tech, a red shirt, shirt freshman. freshman. Yeah. He's one of several yeah. good quarterbacks that they have. It's not hard to hit guys that are wide open. I mean, yeah. I, I'm going to say this. I, I, 
there's not too often I question the effort of a Mountaineer football team uh, because, you know, you think they're out there and they're playing their hardest. But there was times in that game when I, I did do that, a little bit of that. There, there was one player there that really caught my attention that I didn't question his effort, Sam James. Uh, and I've got a lot of problems with Sam James. He doesn't always catch the ball. Sometimes he doesn't give his chest James effort. James has been steadily improving. But he, he seemed like he wanted to play in that game, and, and, and many of them did not. Well, there didn't seem to be the energy. And let's talk about that. A week before we played Baylor, and I had very little to criticize for the Mountaineer team from top to bottom. The lines, the defense, the running backs, the receivers, they played a average or above average yeah. in pretty much every area. And it's amazing that that same group the next week is playing average or below average, again, from top to bottom. This is not uh, Neil Brown's record. This is not JT Daniels' record. This is the team's record that they're doing. The whole team lost this game, just like the whole team won against Baylor. And uh, I have a theory on that, but, I, but I'd like to say the kinds of things that are positive. I know it's real right. easy just to say, I don't like what my spouse is doing. Divorce her. I don't like what my kid's doing. Disown him. I don't like what my employee's doing. Fire him. That's real easy, but at least that ought to be a last a resort method. Although I'm going to say on this side, Harry Truman used to have the thing on his desk that the buck stops here, and oh, the it, buck does it, stop it, at Neil Brown. That's if you're looking to blame. I, I and and I'm blame, blame is blame, fine, no. but, but I want to fix it. Yes, I'd much rather I'm fix something than, than find out who's. The only re the only reason I want to know who's at fault is so it doesn't happen again. Yeah. And I'm not sure why this happened. But it's a team thing. It wasn't like one receiver lost it for it or the refs lost us for it. Even if we'd had the 17 points of turnovers back, we'd have still got it's the heck 31 to 10. Yeah, it's not even, still not a class game. Now, one of the things you, you, I noticed was the contrast in the rhythm between Texas Tech and West Virginia. And I've seen this contrast the last several years when Texas, uh, Texas Tech upsets us. Texas Tech will hustle up to the line run a quick play, whether it's successful or not, and quickly move on to the next play. Uh, frequently, uh, they don't do well. If you look back at that game, you'll see uh, their first downs <coughs> lots of times went for no yardage. Their runs didn't go or their pass was incomplete and it was second and 10 and they hustled up and ran another play. Now that's a disciplined team, I think, doing simpler plays but doing them quickly and doing them well. Excellent. Contrast that with West Virginia. West Virginia would get the ball, they'd run to the line, people would shift from one side to the other, the clock would be running down, then people would shift from the other side back, then, the, then somebody in the booth would see something, signal it, and everybody would stop and turn and stare at the sidelines, then there'd be a checkoff, then we'd run a play, then the play would be good or bad if it wasn't executed. Now, in my opinion, what that does is leave your players constantly worrying about their assignment rather than just playing football. And so they don't know what the play is going to be until the very last second while they're standing there in a, with their finger down. Uh, the other team knows what the play is going to be when they run up to the line and they snap it and they go. It may not be a perfect play, but they concentrate on doing it well. I think the emphasis, this is just my guess, the emphasis under this coach is to run the perfect play, and I think it's overloading the circuits of some of our players. Uh, I have two points on that. Uh, number one, if, if he felt like he had the better players and could beat the other team easily with the better athletes, then you don't have to go cerebral and try to find a perfect play. You just put my play out there. So, but whereas Texas Tech counters that by going very fast. It's like, don't give you time to think about it. Don't give you time. So that's how, that's their edge. Ours is trying to get better Except, thinking about it, but it doesn't always work. Except the last couple of years, Texas Tech has beat us, and we had the better players yeah, the last couple of years. I think you're right. And we still were, we have this obsession with, and again, I, I think it's a good quality, but maybe it's being overdone. This is a coach that keeps track of your GPS and your calories, and he runs well, three practices on the same field at the same time, and he's got a 
He's got an analysis of every single thing going on. That's you're, fine. You're bringing me to my next point. And, and forgive me for interrupting, but, but sometimes, and this is the illustration I'll use, is the, the captain was rearranging chairs on the Titanic. Okay, we're, we're we've we see every little detail, and you know I've been I've managed people for thirty years, and if you look at every little tiny detail, yeah, you can always find a good, a bad, a this, or that anywhere. But at some point, you've got to look at that big picture, and I think this is me, and forgive me, I think it's motivation. Well, I was I'll I'll agree to this extent, and and this is one of the problems I have with nerds, one of many problems with the people with the propeller on their hat. They read stats, and they forget those are people out there. Now, when I turn on my car in the morning, I expect it to start. It's a car. But it people, the very same Texas team that played Alabama and played West Virginia lost to Texas Tech and went out and had trouble with with, uh, with, 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 I, State, with they had trouble with uh, with Iowa State. Iowa State and they lost their Why State. is that? We know they're capable of it. They're people. And they, now you can say and we know that they that it affects you. We give people extra 3 points if they're playing at home versus right. if they're playing in a neutral spot. So we know intuitively it affects people. What is it that changed West Virginia from the fire-breathing players in the Baylor game on, on, at night to the, to the lackadaisical play. And I won't say that. that was, uh, there was just not this the was sub-average just, was play. kind of dull. How about dull? Against dull. Texas Tech. And uh, what is it? it? And my theory is, is that they're, they're constantly worried about their assignment and they're not just playing football but that's a guess. Uh, the, the locker room will know better than me. I will say, because this is another thing I like to pound on, we saw that defense miss tackle after tackle yeah. after yeah. tackle in this Texas Tech game. Now, Texas Tech is quick. Texas Tech is fast. But if you hesitate a little bit, you'll give them the edge. But we had, lots of times, we had the right defense called. We had a player in the area. He didn't tackle. Yeah, I'll give you another contrast. We throw that darn uh, wide receiver screen all the time. A wide receiver screen is the quarterback throwing to a receiver out wide to the left or the right. The other receiver out there is supposed to block their man on top of you, leaving the guy who catches the ball with a one-on-one -on -one matchup to break down the field. When Texas Tech ran it, they knocked our people on our ass. And their guys would gain and extra so yards. They had to have other people come up from their position four and five yards away to try to get there to make the tackle. And they gained yards with and it. And they where... gained yards. When we ran it, sometimes we didn't catch the pass. Frequently, the other blocker missed his block. And on other occasions, they just ran past us and tackled us behind the line. That's execution. That's not a perfect play. That's execution. If you're not doing the basics... It doesn't matter what play you call. Number oh, of times true. we saw we saw plays called that I thought were pretty good plays, well called, and the receiver would just drop it, or the running back would run through the wrong hole. The, so, but why? Why good execution one week and not so much the next? You, I, I tend to I, agree with you. you know, it's attitude. I'm gonna say motivation was one thing. I, I'm going back to when I used to play. I didn't need a lot of motivation to play because I was internally motivated. Because uh, I said every time I set foot on the field, I wanted to do my very best. I didn't want anybody to see me doing well, bad. I didn't. I want, don't want to uh, imply these guys. And I'm are not implying to do that. Their best I'm not either. implying that either. But they're either hesitant. When I go back to my assignment football. It's almost like the defensive guys are in the right place. They've done their assignment. Now they don't know what to do. They're standing up. They don't know how to tackle. Well, so you have to run wild. You have to knock the guy down. You... I'll, I'll take another step there. Where he came from, he from Troy. This is Coach Brown. I'm not trying to beat up on him, but I'm just going to tell you flat out. They didn't have to worry about NIL. They didn't have to worry about guys transferring away. He had people in there three and four years, and he taught them how to tackle. He taught them how to play. He taught them their assignments, so they didn't have to think about it. This year, we came into this year, and on our defense, the line has come back, but we got Koba, who's his first year there, and a whole slew of people in the secondary who haven't played. He, he hasn't had the opportunity to teach them how to tackle. He hasn't had the opportunity to teach them where to go, so oh. they're constantly in flux. Now, that's not excusing it, 
because what you're saying is, go get them. <laughs> go hit them. I'm, Tackle them. Knock the man down. I'm with you. Knock the man down. I mean, and this is our this is our tip not to pile on because yeah. that's what you're going to see in the other videos. Some people dress up like clowns. We ain't wearing no clown we outfits some here. Some people wear their so hats golden blue dude. And all of that what are you? What's wrong but, with you, but man? But piling on the coach is not constructive. Unless you've decided you need a divorce, in which case you don't care what anymore. Well, I still care. I still want to see these kids the well. This, and let me add one little more thing for the. I think the team's improved. I think we have better quarterbacks deeper now than we've had in a long time. I think we have better running backs deeper now. I liked Letty last year, but we're deeper now than we've had in a long time. I think we have the best offensive line we've had in a long time. I agree. I think we have the best defensive line we've had in a long time, except maybe the one that Brown had last year. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. th I don't know where we are on receivers, but they are improving steadily. We used to have very weak special teams under Holgerson and the first few years under Brown. That seems to be changing. The special teams, punt returns and all that were yeah. horrible. Well, yeah. uh, sure. Our defensive secondary was pretty good a year or two ago, and it's down. I don't, and plus, I think we've got a lot of youngsters coming up, some youngsters that may be better than the guys that are playing. I think the program's improving. Those of you that just want wins and losses, I understand where you're coming from. I do too. I'm not ready to get a divorce. I'm not ready to disown my however, kid. And however, I'm not ready to fire the coach. However, this one here is down there. I mean, the worst loss to an unranked opponent since 1965. Oh, I, I understand. This is as bad as an effort as I've I, seen since he's been here for four years. I, okay? I love the guy. I wanted. I emailed you and said, a, this is who we need to get. He didn't take a single snap. He didn't miss I a single know. tackle. But the buck stops here. You want to blame him because you want to blame somebody. The buck stops Blame here. the quarterback. Blame the guards. Blame the tackles. Blame the secondary. Blame the receivers. It's a team loss. That's my point. Now, you're right. why, what does it take to fix it? I don't I'm know. I that. have a theory. I don't know. I have to tell you this. I don't think dressing up like a clown and calling and flying an airplane over the stadium, calling that everybody be fired. I don't think that's going to help. Those are only for people that don't want to help anymore. They've How about up. this? How about this? Let's analogize it this way. Neil Brown is the bad parent in the relationship. <laughs> the fans are the good parent in the relationship. And these players are the kids. The more they bicker and yell at each other, the more it hurts those kids. These kids that are playing are having a problem because they read social media. They see that. They do. And so w w you're if not, you're if us, you really care about those kids, if, then stop it. If you're watching us, I want you to relax. D just play football. You guys are capable. Yeah, and despite what he might have implied, you're every bit as good as Texas Tech. Absolutely. You're every bit as good as every team on it. I think maybe. We can beat every team on I schedule. I really believe Texas that. Texas was a better team. But every team we played so far should have been a, a, a toss-up game and could have been. And we can win all the rest of the games. We can. Uh, we can um, lose all the rest of them, too. Well, that's, that's what you want. That's the kind yeah. of game you want. In I'm 2014, you. Nebraska fired their coach. He had nine and four seasons. They hired Mike Riley and went 19 and 19 the next three seasons. In 2010, Maryland fired Ralph Friggen. He, Friggen was so irritated he burned his Maryland diploma. <laughs> they hired Randy Edsel and went 22 and 34 the next few seasons. Um, you from can, Connecticut. I remember even that. Texas Tech <laughs> in 2009, they fired Mike Leach. Mike Leach had won more games in the Big 12 than any team except Texas and Oklahoma. The pirate. He was like 84 and 43. They hired Tommy Tuberville. And uh, and Kingsbury Cliff and went Kingsbury. fifty five and fifty seven the ran next off to the NFL so and Tuberville's and Nelson or the, something. Uh, now. Yeah, running out and firing a coach is not rubbing in a magic a magic lamp. Uh, you, you have to look at what, and it's not simply on wins and losses. It's which direction the program's going. Neil, That's my the end of my preaching. Neil, if you're watching, read Don Nealon's book. 
<laughs> get uh, off of the details and get into the motivation. That's what it is. You're probably not watching, but maybe some of your players. So the are next time you miss a tackle, Neil, we'll know that you've read the book. Oh no, that's right. He didn't <laughs> no, miss a tackle. Right. Miss Our tackle. secondary missed the damn the tackle. The buck stops here, yeah. Mr. Truman. <laughs> yeah. Well, he needs to make them not miss tackles. Make now, them not, maybe why not reading, teach him to read. Maybe better. reading a book will fix that. <laughs> oh, anyway. that's good. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Don't forget. Be, be sure to like and like comment. Like and subscribe. And subscribe. Comment and share. <laughs> we appreciate you all. Thank you.